Welcome back to CS11. This is lecture 3A, corresponding to chapter 2, section 1. Uh, you should only uh, watch this video um, after you've completed lecture in lab number 2 and uh, chapter 1. Uh, when I say you've completed the lab, um, that means that you've actually done those uh, programming exercises. I know it's very tempting to look at, at a problem and say, oh, I know how to do that, so there's no point in me actually doing it. Um, but there is the most effective way to learn how to program is by actually writing programs and not by reading about them or watching me uh, talk about them. And so it's very important to put in the time uh, uh, practicing. If you look at the problems uh, that I've assigned and uh, and decide that they are too easy for you to do, then um, pick harder problems from the uh, uh, end of the chapter, but don't, definitely don't skip them. Uh, time on task is very important. Otherwise, it's like trying to learn by putting a book under your pillow and sleeping on it and hoping that the knowledge just kind of magically floats into your brain, which um, only works in, in movies. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the uh, example program that we finished off um, last time with a little bit of a mystery. And remember that depending on whether or not I have this space here, the uh, compiler thought this um, entire line was part of this string. And it focuses on uh, this character here, this backslash, um, is actually a, a special character with special meaning. Backslash character here says that the character that follows me should have um, a special meaning. Um, some of the backslash sequences that you should be familiar with are backslash n, which will um, create a new line character, very much like the, what the end l uh, command does. Let's go ahead and compile this program. Minus wall minus pedantic, and I'll type lab, and then I'll hit the tab key. And I hear a little beep, and I'll hit the tab key again, and it shows me my choices. Here, the tab key uh, is the next kind of a shortcut I want to show you for working at the command line. Previously, we learned the arrow keys up and down to scroll through previous commands. And the tab key is used for file name completion. When you hit the tab key and you're typing the name of something, the compiler will type out the rest of the name for you, as long as it knows which file you're talking about. Now here I typed lab and hit tab, and notice that there's two files, lab-p1 underscore 10 dot cpp and lab01 dot cpp. Now the computer's not going to guess, so it'll only uh, type out the name when it knows. Now, so if I type at least one more character and now hit tab, notice it types the rest of the name for me. So using tab for file name completion can make working at the command line much faster. Oh, look at that. I got a, um, a warning here that it's warning me that there's this unknown escape sequence. We'll fix that warning in a moment. Um, now that's only a warning, so the program has been compiled and run. And notice here, I get the first new line and then the second blank line uh, after that. Backslash quote gives you a quote mark. So if we wanted to say quote and then have this little uh, pyramid here, we could say backslash quote, backslash quote, okay. And we'll go ahead and hit save and compile. And here we see the um, quotes on either side, but notice we didn't see this character here. And that's because the backslash, um, as we saw in this warning, is the part of an escape sequence. So when it saw the backslash, it also looked at the next character to figure out what special thing it should do. And when it saw a space there, which it wasn't expecting, gave us a warning. Well, what if you just wanted to actually print that backslash? Then you need two backslashes in a row. Okay, so look at that. And we'll compile the program and run, and you get that. So a little bit of a puzzle there with backslash characters. Let's talk about variables. And what is a variable? Well, in a program, when a program is running, most computer programs need to track various values. So, for example, um, let's write a program that uh, is, looks like it might be part of an enrollment system and where we want to keep track of how many people have enrolled in a particular class. So if we wanted to keep track of enrollments, we're going to need to declare a variable. To declare a variable is to create a value that your program can then um, track its value over time. 
the a declaration of a variable has um, at least two required pieces, and that is the type and the name of the variable. First, the type, um, and we're going to look at three types, int, double, and string, describes what kind of values that variable is allowed to take on. Uh, int, int means uh, integer values, and so those are positive and negative whole numbers, such as 5, negative 5, or 13,470. Um, you're not allowed to have commas uh, in the numbers uh, themselves. Uh, double is a number with a fractional uh, component, uh, including here 5.0, negative 3.75, or 13,470.825. So if you need a number that's got a fractional or decimal component, then you use a double. And then a string is a variable that keeps text for us. For example, somebody's name. Here my name in all lowercase. Okay, so to declare a variable here in our program, here I'll say int enrollment. And now that variable is declared. The computer will um, put it somewhere in memory, and we'll then be able to track its value. Okay, now a third part of the declaration of a variable that's optional, but that you almost always see, is an equal sign and then followed by an initial value. Um, so that's known as an initialization. And so here, let's start off the enrollment at zero. And in C++, this is usually uh, pretty important to do because when you create a variable, it doesn't get any particular initial value and will have a random or garbage value. And um, so uh, initializing it um, is usually the safe and correct thing to do. Okay, well, now if the point of the variable is to have a program track a value that changes over time as the program is running, then we're going to need some way to modify this enrollment variable. And the way to do that is with what's called an assignment statement. And an assignment statement is the most important thing that we're going to do with a variable. And you give the variable name, and then an equal sign, and then the new value that you want to give to that variable. And the new value that we put here can actually be an equation, something that needs to be calculated or figured out. So here I'll say enrollment equals 1. Now notice I don't say int again. The word int or the type only comes during the declaration, and you can only declare the, a variable once. Once it's declared, um, you can't declare it again. All right, let's, I'll put this, let's go ahead and compile this program. And this program is called Lecture 03. And we'll go ahead and run it. And here you can see that enrollment is 1. Notice if I try to put that type there and compile the program, I'll get an error, and it tells me that I'm trying to redefine enrollment, so you can't do that. All right. Now, the value that I assign, I mentioned, can be an expression, and it can be an expression based on the current value of enrollment. So here, I'm writing enrollment equals enrollment plus 1. Now, what that means is that to change the value of enrollment, it first has to figure out what this is equal to. Calculate that. Then it does the assignment. What is the current value of enrollment? Which is 0 at the time this executes. So that's equal to 0. And 0 plus 1 is 1. And after it's figured that out, then it assigns a 1 to enrollment. So this line here will have the effect of incrementing the value of enrollment by 1. Let's run the program and compile and run and you can see there that it's a 1. Now, um, incrementing a variable by 1 is done so commonly that there's also 
a shorthand command to do that using the increment operator or a plus plus. Variables are used to track values in a program and sometimes those values that we want to keep track of don't change over time. So let's say we're doing here this enrollment program and maybe we want to have a value that represents what the maximum enrollment in the class can be, maybe due to the fire marshal. So in that case, we can create what's called a constant using the keyword C-O-N-S-T, which comes in front of the type name. And that means that the value of this variable is fixed and can't be changed. By convention, the name of constants come in all uppercase, and so here now I've got a variable called max enrollment that I've set to 40. And then I'd be able to use that in this program. For example, later on, when we're trying to see if someone can enroll, we can compare the enrollment variable against this one to see if we should um, let someone enroll in the class. And we'll see, of course, how to do that later on. One last thing that I want to show you um, is the ability to add comments to the program. Uh, comments are, are a very useful part of the program. In order to add documentation, uh, comments are designed to be useful for human beings, um, and there's a couple of ways we can do it. First of all, with the slash slash, we can add a comment for the rest of the line. And uh, notice it's here in a different color, and the compiler will ignore that. And so we can put in just a note for um, uh, human beings. The purpose of a comment is to, you know, describe your code or explain it. Well, that wraps up our quick tour of Chapter 2, Section 1. Thank you.